I've received several questions today on what I thought about President Obama winning the Nobel Peace Prize. I actually wasn't totally shocked that it happened, but at least, uh, uh, you know, it gives us a chance to talk a little bit about foreign policy. It's a bit ironic for him to win the Nobel Peace Prize because uh, the application had to be in on February 1st. He had been in office a total of 12 days, and during that short period of time, he had already uh, gave, given orders and supported uh, extension of the bombing into Pakistan where some civilians were killed. Uh, his uh, policy is not exactly pro-peace. Uh, his tone is better, and he talks about more negotiations, but he's a much uh, bigger internationalist, and I believe uh, w winning this Nobel Prize uh, represents more internationalism and more UN-NATO type approach to world affairs. But uh, the idea that it's a, a real symbol of a great move toward peace, I think there's some real shortcomings on, on that. But the one thing that bothers me the most, though, about this is that um, presidents very often win with a more pro-peace program, and, and Obama was obviously more pro-peace than McCain, and uh, people expected a less militant uh, type of foreign policy. Matter of fact, uh, President Bush in the year 2000 took the position that we shouldn't have nation building and we shouldn't be the policemen of the world, and yet look at what happened. Uh, but right now, I, I think what is happening is that Obama has been able to totally neutralize the anti-war coalitions that have existed around the country. The anti-war left doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Code Pink now supports Obama's position in Afghanistan. So uh, this, this to me is, 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 is very sad that it's happening. It's, it reminds me of what happens when we elect conservative presidents. We elect a president to have less government and balanced budget and less spending, and yet we get them in office and, and they do exactly the opposite, and there's no resistance from the conservative base. And now there's no resistance of, 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 of much value in the uh, liberal base to be opposed to war. Right now, it looks like the war will continue over there. Obama wants more troops uh, uh, into, Af into Afghanistan, more bombing in Pakistan. It looks like Pakistan is going to be the front of the war. And there's been no significant troop reduction in Iraq. We've armed the Sunnis over there. And when the war breaks out once again, the Sunnis are going to have the weapons that are going to kill Shiites and maybe Americans. Uh, so uh, this, this debate about what we should be doing over there uh, really isn't a debate. There should be a debate on should we be there and why are we there and should we win the war versus we shouldn't be there. No, the debate is how many troops do we send? Should the front lines be in Afghanistan or should the front lines be in Pakistan? And how many, uh, how many contractors should replace the soldiers that we are removing from Iraq? It's, it's the wrong, wrong debate. This whole idea that you can give the president a Nobel Peace Prize and think it's going to be a promotion to peace, you know, it's sort of like giving Woodrow Wilson the Peace Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize, which he did receive. And just think of the harm he has done to the American system and to our government and how much harm he created in the 20th century. And uh, so th these, these prizes have to... Uh, have to make one point. They can't be credible. And uh, I think in this case, a lot of people already are pointing out uh, the uh, irony of a president has essentially not done anything, get nominated 12 days after he's elected. What is the real goal behind this? Unfortunately, I don't think it's a good goal. I think it's internationalism and world government and not peace at all. Someday, I'd like to see the pro-peace movement grow and uh, it's still alive and well, but it's quiescent, and I think there may be less of a coalition. It looks to me like if we are going to argue the case for pro-peace and pro-American uh, strength uh, without going to war and pro-trade and pro-travel and all these things, it's probably going to have to come from constitutional conservatives and libertarians, and hopefully we can keep persuading as many people that come from the left to support us on this position, rather than them succumbing to the temptation for partisan reasons, say, whatever Obama says, we'll do it. Just like so many conservatives said, no matter what the president says, 
in the previous administration, we will support him. Someday we have to stand up for what is right and not be so narrow-minded in our partisanship.